The UTRGV women's basketball looking to build on the best season in program history. And we're just a week and a half from the debut of their most decorated recruiting class ever. We take you out to UTRGV Athletics' fourth annual bone marrow drive. UTRGV Athletics hosts the trunk or treat, while the UTRGV baseball and volleyball teams get in on the Halloween antics. All that and more coming up inside this edition of V Nation. That's V for Valley. V for Victory. And V for Chaos. This is V Nation. Hey everyone and welcome to V Nation, I'm Jonah Goldberg. If you can believe it, the countdown to tip off for college basketball season now stands at just nine days. Last week we told you about how the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley has eight newcomers on its squad. Well how about the UTRGV women's basketball team? They've got 11 newcomers comprising the 68th best recruiting class in the nation, the best in program history. Michael Aguilar has the story. Well, the, the recruits were ranked 68th nationally by the uh, Collegiate Basketball Report, and that's by Dan Olson. And he is probably the most credible recruiting coordinator, recruiting director in the entire country. He is outstanding in what he does. So being ranked that high by Dan, that was a very good honor. Uh, we signed a lot of kids that probably had a little bit to do with it, but we brought some players to the, to the team that I think has, has a chance to be has a chance to really do something special here at UTRGV. To kind of begin with our freshmen, uh, we have Bernicia Peters who hails from Houston, Texas uh, via Jacksonville, Florida. She moved over when she was uh, in high school. Uh, who runs the point, is a left-handed guard, very quick, even though she's a little bit undersized, really has a way of um, distributing to others, uh, has ability to shoot the ball, uh, can, it, it can do a lot of great things. Then you have uh, Sika Kuzik, who has made a definite impact on our team. Six, uh, about a 5'10 guard that can handle the one, the two, or the three. And she's really showed me some things on the one that I really like. Uh, and a good story on Sika is uh, Dan Hipshire was recruiting in Las Vegas at an AAU tournament and went to see this team work out, and she was working out with the guys. And that's where I found out about Sika was through Dan, and it worked out, and we recruited her and signed her, and it's going to be a definite addition to our team. Uh, the next player that comes to mind is Adil Turk, and you know this is my 11th year of coaching uh, college basketball, and uh, you know haven't ever had a kid that can shoot it as well as she does. I mean, has the ability really to to fill it up. You know, I think in our two scrimmages that we've had. Uh, she's scored a lot of points and she's uh, has gotten better on the defensive end, has gotten better with her mid-range pull-up jumper. Uh, just a kid that just loves basketball. You know, if she had her choice, she'd be in the gym all day. Last but not least is Mary Savoy. Uh, just a kid that, I mean, she just finds a way to score. She can run like a guard. Uh, she can jump as good as anybody. I mean, she is a big time athlete, but also a very good basketball player. So outside shots improving, can put it on the floor. And to have, I believe she was overall in her position, she was a top 10 player at her position. And then she was ranked around like the 26th or 27th best junior college prospect. So she, she and uh, Anushka, and um, Leela, very good gets for, for, uh, for us down here. Recruiting is 24-7, 365. Uh, just for instance, I've been recruiting Angie Villarreal ever since I came to the Valley three years ago. Uh, I think that she has a chance to be pretty good. But the recruiting process, you know, we got Adele Turk from Turkey. I've got uh, Lele Havili from Salt Lake City via the Tongan Island. I've got Anusta Maldonado from Odessa, from Washington, Roots in, in uh, Puerto Rico. We've got Sika Kuzik from Romania, Hilda Karchin's daughter from uh, Iceland. So 
We've got kids from Washington to Oregon, just about everywhere, you name it. We, we recruit internationally and we recruit all over the country. Well, you know, I'm fortunate. I work with uh, Coach Ted Well, and, uh, you know, he brought me in here to, to obviously coach, but uh, he let me be the uh, recruiting coordinator as well. So, and we all work together as a staff. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we will bring, you know, as assistants, head coach will bring different people to the table and, you know, we decide, okay, these are the targets, these are the people we want to go after, here's the people we want to be contacting regularly, um, you know, but we just, we just get after it. The new crowd's going to have to play. They're going to have to, they're going to have to step up and make it happen this year. You know, I never bet on next year. Will we have a lot returning next year? Oh, yeah. But see, I'm worried about this year. I'm not worried about next year. So we're going to play hard. We're going to play emotional. We're going to play spiritual. But one of my favorite things that we'll end with this is uh, we're going to fight. We're going to fight all of our opponents. We're going to fight them until hell freezes over. And then we're going to fight them on the ice. Get your V's up. Over four and a half years ago, the UT RGV baseball team answered a call for help. A young boy named Nolan Naranjo had aplastic anemia and was in need of a blood transfusion so the baseball team hosted a blood drive. That following summer, however, Nolan's condition worsened. He had MDS pre-leukemia, and now he needed a bone marrow transplant. So the UTRGV baseball team again answered the call, hosting a bone marrow drive. Nolan's mother was a half match. She saved his life. The bone marrow drives didn't stop there, though, as now for the fourth year in a row, the UTRGV baseball team, and the third year in a row, the UTRGV women's basketball team, hosted an on-campus bone marrow drive. It's unbelievable what that family's been through, Jonah. Uh, you know, having a little boy, constant uh, blood transfusions, uh, knowing that uh, when the steroid treatment didn't work, um, that uh, you could lose your son. Or, you know, it, it's, it's very traumatic. Uh, and, uh, you know, absolutely. Um, it could be anyone. It could be, you know, your, your child, uh, somebody you know, uh, children or a family member. And it's, it's just what the family went through. Uh, and thank God that uh, now uh, Nolan's doing much better. But it, there's no doubt the, uh, that the driving force behind it all is, uh, is Nolan. Nolan is an inspiration for many, and that's helped these annual bone drives to be an overwhelming success. Not only has UTRGV Athletics registered thousands of potential donors, but they've found six matches as well, the last two of which helped to save the lives of children, one of whom was seven, and the other, a newborn baby. The bone marrow drive can actually help save lives and um, it just helps, it's just one other way that we as a baseball team can give back to the community here and maybe have the chance to save a life. It is incredible. Um, they really have made a difference within the community helping these patients that are in need of a transplant. Um, we have had uh, matches come from these drives and people have, have had their cure for cancer. If we go down to the numbers, one in every 500 person is actually the match. So um, I think that coming out um, getting as many people as we can to to just sign up and actually maybe finding someone that could be the match would be actually, I think, amazing. And look how easy it is to save a life. Just fill out a form, swab the inside of your cheek, and you're done. Seeing people that are so willing to donate, it, it really like hits me here just because that you see that people actually care about other people, whether they know them or not, they're still willing to take time out of their day to register just in case that somebody may need their help. Saving a life, you, you, all you can have to kind of ask people, hey, help save a life. And I think most people, once they realize what, uh, that it's so simple, it's just basically a swab on the inside part of your cheek. Um, and that's it. You kind of turn it in. Um, you send it into the uh, bone uh, marrow registry. See if you're a match. Um, and if you are, um, they'll call you. Uh, you give them an answer, and then you take it from there. But um, yeah, they need to be outgoing, and most of most of our our guys are, and they're trying to sign up as many as many people as we can. UTRGV Athletics hosted a number of Halloween activities, a trunk or treat for the kids, a costumed volleyball practice, but my favorite may have been the costumed soccer scrimmage by the UTRGV baseball team. Coming up inside V Nation, we have the full Halloween roundup. We strive to achieve excellence through determination and hard work. We are committed to learning from those around us. Our professors and peers. Our coaches and teammates. And our opponents. We compete with integrity and passion. And we seize our moment. 
when the opportunity arises. We take pride in our communities. And believe that we can inspire others just as they have inspired us. We may wear different colors, but we share the same purpose. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western, Western Athletic, Athletic Conference. Conference. With Halloween this past weekend, UTRGV Athletics hosted a number of events, including Trunk or Treat, which gave local children an opportunity to dress up, trick or treat, and enjoy what was effectively a carnival-like atmosphere in a safe environment during a UTRGV soccer match. Michael Aguilar has this report. The UTRGV Athletics Department hosted their Trunk or Treat event during halftime at the men's soccer match October 30th. Trunk or Treat is a way for families to celebrate Halloween in a safe environment. It's a great atmosphere, man. Kids having a great time. Feels good to be at the soccer game and uh, celebrate Halloween, man. It's, it's great. Yeah, it's definitely a great atmosphere out here. It's, great. it's good to see the kids out here celebrating Halloween and getting free candy. But I mean, here, we're just uh, using it as, as a good time for UTRGV to come together with the community. Uh, giving out candies, we've got the whole team here, got coaches here too, so I mean, as you hear the kids having fun, man, it's a great environment. Yeah, it's definitely fun to get back to the kids. I remember when I was younger, I love Halloween. Having different organizations from UTRGV embrace the Halloween theme by playing games, decorating their vehicles, and giving out candy. I think it's good. It's a good like event for like families and kids to come out and for like us organizations to give us an event to also like expose us and uh, work on our social skills, you know, like give out to the community and everything. Have a good time. For V Nation, I'm Michael Aguilar. The trigger treat was the day before Halloween during a men's soccer match. On Halloween, during a women's soccer match, it was the UTRGV baseball team taking center stage as they played a halftime soccer scrimmage in full costume. They were basically playing 19 on 19 and ended up going the full length of the pitch for most of the scrimmage. A few folks were able to get the ball into the back of the net, including at the very end, they decided to shoot some penalty kicks. I'll tell you, the Little Mermaid really needs to work on goalkeeping skills. Only on Halloween, huh? It wasn't just UTRGV baseball joining the fans and dressing up this year. As UTRGV volleyball held a Halloween practice, going through the drills in full costume. We get about halfway through October and we start into the second half of our season and it's just been a grind up to this point and you know we still got a little bit of work we need to do before we go on the road here but it kind of just gives the girls a little bit of a break you know they're out for Halloween we're on the road on Halloween so it gives them a chance to enjoy a little bit. It was really fun it was something different like I never got to practice in my costume so it was amazing just to practice different you know be spontaneous. I think it means a lot for us uh, I mean we we still have fun on the practice but uh, thanks to coach, we enjoyed it even more. You know, practice was the same as every day, but we just had more fun with all of the staff on us. <laughs> and if the student athletes wanted to try to stay in character during the practice, all the better. Over the years, we've had different kids come with different characters, and you know, if they can stay in character and practice, all the better. We don't have any Supermans this year, but uh, that would be nice. So the, the more fun they have with it, the more fun it is for everybody. It's great to have fun because maybe some teams don't get to have fun like we do, like in the middle of the season and just to switch it up. And for Joanna Baronchik, it was more than just a fun day. It was also her first real experience with Halloween. It was pretty fun. I've never experienced it. You know, I'm from Poland, so we don't celebrate it. And yeah, like being here for the first time and celebrating Halloween, it was pretty cool. I enjoyed it. The Vaqueros opening up a weekend road trip with a sweep of Chicago State. Boyana Mitrovic led three Vaqueros in double figures kills with 12, followed by Haley Durham with 11 and Alicia Watson with 10. Career high 15 digs and a career high two blocks for Fatomata da Costa. Strong efforts all around. 
as the Vaqueros outhit the Cougars 245 to 058. Chicago State, I thought we played, came out and played well. Um, you know, tight in the first set and kind of got some momentum going there in set two. I thought we served really well and kind of executed what we wanted to do. We, we talked about staying disciplined against them and we did a really good job of those things and, and came out with a nice win there. The Vaqueros followed it up with a 1-3 loss in Missouri, Kansas City. 20 kills for Mitrovich, marking her sixth match of at least 20 kills this season. Durham was next with 10. And how about Alexandra Ecker? The freshman had a career high four aces to go with seven kills and two blocks. I thought we were a little flat against UMKC and they definitely left the door open for us to take a match there. And I think we just kind of dropped the ball on, on coming out with the energy and that we needed to, to take a match on the road. Want to get rewarded for tweeting, Facebooking, and Instagramming about UTRGV athletics? Maybe get bonus points for checking in at home events? Now you can. Download the VFAN Rewards app on your smartphone today. It's a free download, and you can earn points to win prizes such as backpacks, hats, shirts, water bottles, and more. Need more information? Then log on to vfanrewards.com. We've shown you some of the events surrounding the UTRGV soccer matches this weekend. Now let's show you just how they did on the field. Next Inside V Nation, highlights from the week that was in UTRGV Athletics. First year programs don't often have seniors. And true to form, last year's women's soccer team didn't have any. But a second year program? Well, that's a little different. This year's UTRGV women's soccer team had one senior, Fernanda Baena. And she was honored before the start of the final regular season home match as the Vaqueros took on New Mexico State. You see Baena getting honored as the first ever senior in the program with her family and Coach Bagariu. It felt special. I mean, I was doing this for four, like three years for my seniors before. So to finally have my year, it feels good. It's a mix of emotions, you know. On to the match, 50th minute. Marcelo Ramirez from the top of the box, got it. Ramirez's second goal of the season, it's 1-0. 18 minutes later, Andrea Barrera starts the breakaway, gives it to Kelsey Jepson on her left, and there's the finish. The Vaqueros win 2-1. They enter the WAC tournament having won two straight and three of their last four. We had a pretty good week of practices. We, we stepped it up. I don't know what it was. We just stepped it up. We practiced good, and it obviously it showed in the field. Well, it was a very emotional night, and by the start, we're like, let's do this for Fernie, let's do it for Fernie, and we did. Like, it's a great night, great way to end her season, so we love her. Here's a look at the WAC Women's Soccer Tournament bracket. UTRGV, the number six seed, and set for a quarterfinals matchup with third seed of Missouri, Kansas City on Thursday in Bakersfield. Kansas City is a tough team, but we're gonna go in with everything we got, high intensity, we have nothing to lose and everything to gain, so. I mean, we're just going to try our best and hopefully we come out with the win. On to UTRGV men's soccer, opening the weekend against San Jose State. And late in the match, it's the senior, Archie Masson, starting up the play. A lot of nice passing with Carlos Acevedo, Raul Fierro, and Rico Leitinen eventually finding Fernando Ariano. His first career goal for the Vaqueros fall, 3-1. It was fun scoring for our team and building more momentum for us. Unfortunately, we lost 3-1, but we still got to keep our head up and keep going. We started very well. Um, we got into our rhythm. We've been, you know, and, and that's the the progress that we've made throughout these first, you know, three months. Um, we're playing some very good soccer right now. We're connecting very well, um, but unfortunately, with the the lack of experience, one mistake, you know, can cost us a game. Um, and, and that's been a reoccurring theme, and, and it's tough. You know, I just said to the boys right now, that's very frustrating still. It's a humbling experience, but we have to look at the things that we're putting together which will make us stronger in the future. We still have two games remaining this season. We want to make sure we show our best effort, show exactly what we're capable of. We want to prove to the fans. We had a lot of guys come out here to watch. Um, we want to make sure they see uh, an attractive soccer playing side um, that can also have the potential to go on and be the kind of team they want to come out and support every week. Coach Lee wanted to see his team show the fans something. Well, 42 hours later, the fans got quite a treat against CSU Bakersfield. Pick it up in the 39th minute. Juanito Garcia's initial attempt is blocked, but he gets the ball right back and puts it in. Team leading third goal of the season for Garcia, it's 1-0. Just over six minutes left. Ole Tinkanen attempting UTRGV's first penalty kick of the season, and he doesn't miss. 2-0 Vaqueros. 
And then, with about 30 seconds to go, Raul Fierro with the cherry on top. His first career goal as the Vaqueros tie for their largest win of the season, 3-0. Our mentality, um, well, every game has been just with, um, you know, like, go out there, let's, let's, let's win, let's try, and, let's try and work hard for each other, fight for each other and everything. And, and today it was, it was more about, you know, we talked about it in the locker room that we wanted our senior to at least go out with one more win, you know, uh, two more uh, these last two games. So we pretty much all fought for, for, for him and, and, and for each other, you know, so it showed on the field. It felt really good that the boys got the reward um, for the hard work. We, we've played like that in, in a lot of other games. We've had the 1-0 the lead, but unfortunately we've either made a mental error or, you know, sometimes we've had a decision that went against us and, you know, we've lost the game. That inexperience in those key moments has sometimes gone against us. And today, you know, it's just great that the boys can get the reward. You know, the penalty, you know, our hard work, you know, led to that penalty being given and that was a key moment in the game that went in our favour this time that in many other games has gone against us. So, you know, really proud. You can see a lot of the good work that the boys have put in, but they haven't always got that reward. So it's very pleasing, and I'm happy for them. A pair of second-team All-WAC honorees for UTRGV Cross Country at the WAC Championships, as Teresa Sova came in ninth on the women's side, and Jose Juan Wells finished 13th on the men's side. Our two front runners did a fantastic job. You know, Teresa Silva went out there just with tenacity and purpose. And you can see making second team all conference, you know, moving up from I think she was in the thirties last year, you know, now to moving up till ninth in the conference. Fantastic leap. Um, just been the story of her season. It's awesome. She worked diligently over the summer and she's just having, you know, great success cross country season. Uh, Juan Wells, again, you know, ran pretty tough, you know, was in that front pack, made second team as well. Want to help prepare our student athletes for excellence in life? Then it's time to become a part of something bigger and support V Nation by joining the V Club. You can become a member of the V Club for just $100 a year. All of the proceeds go directly to student athlete scholarships, so visit goutrgv.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. We strive to achieve excellence through determination and hard work. We are committed to learning from those around us. Our professors and peers. Our coaches and teammates. And our opponents. We compete with integrity and passion. And we seize our moment when the opportunity arises. We take pride in our communities. And believe that we can inspire others just as they have inspired us. We may wear different colors, but we share the same purpose. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western, Western Athletic Conference. Conference. Here's what's coming up inside V Nation this week. UTRGV Volleyball closes out the home portion of its schedule on Thursday against Grand Canyon and Saturday against CSU Bakersfield, while men's soccer wraps up its season at home on Sunday against Houston Baptist. UTRGV women's soccer competes in the WAC tournament starting Thursday, and as those sports wind down, basketball starts up with a third annual tip-off luncheon on Thursday and men's basketball hosting Texas A&M International for an exhibition game on Saturday. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in V-Nation this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then... We play for you! Tell them bees up! Grab Roddy while we out here getting threes up! This is madness, man, who wouldn't want to be us? Ain't nothing to hold us down, so the bees up! Get those bees up! Tell them bees up! Grab Roddy while we out here getting threes up! We strive to achieve excellence through determination and hard work. We are committed to learning from those around us. Our professors and peers. Our coaches and teammates. And our opponents. We compete with integrity and passion. And we seize our moment when the opportunity arises. We take pride in our communities. And believe that we can inspire others just as they have inspired us. We may wear different colors, but we share the same purpose. 
We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Conference.